Hey, hi developers. Welcome to Open Education Channel. And in this video, we're going to see how we can connect MySQL database to our .NET Core based application. So in this video, I will be using ASP.NET Core application, ASP.NET Core web application. And the specific version is that uh, we will be using ASP.NET Core 5, which is the latest version. Okay. So for connecting MySQL, you don't need any additional installation. I am assuming that you have MySQL installed on your system, but this method will work even if you are using any remote MySQL database. Okay. So let's start. I will first create a project. So go to file new project. And uh, here I will select ASP.NET Core web application. Click on next. And here I will give it name MySQL connection demo. Click on create. And then it will ask you about the project template. So I will be using model view controller for this tutorial. And here it is ASP.NET Core 5.0. Click on create. And here it is. This is our project generated by that template. And here we have our controllers. This is the home controller. So I will not be adding any uh, extra controller. Also, I will not be using any uh, additional class libraries uh, for managing our data i will be putting all our uh, database access logic in this single method just to show you that how you can connect it but yeah of course in the real world application you will be using uh, like you know, different layers you know database access layer business layer and this code will be most probably in your database access layer and business layer will consume that and this application which is the presentation layer that will consume the business layer but here i will just put in all those database connection thing right here in this single method so here we'll have a comment connect to mysql and what we will be doing is that we will be i have uh, you know already a test database which have a person table and it has some person related data just the id first name last name and age so to connect to mysql all you need is a mysql connector nuget package so i will go ahead on my project here select that i mean right click on this and select manage nuget packages and in this i will come to the browse section here i will type mysql and it will then start searching it. So here is that library, mysql.data. Okay. I will be using this thing because I will be using ADO.NET connection. If you are using Entity Framework Core, then you can select this thing. But uh, this tutorial is based on ADO.NET. And in future, if I will be creating Entity Framework Core, then I will put that link in the description of this video. So go ahead and uh, install this package. And now this is installed. So let me close this and come back to our controller here. And to connect uh, our database, we will be using MySQL connection which is provided by mysql.data okay so i will be using using a statement and here i will write mysql connection and with control dot so it will it will show you the suggestion mysql connection using mysql.data.mysql client okay like this thing and uh, give this variable name con is equal to new mysql connection and here you have to give your connection string now again these things should be in your app string.json file okay so what 
people mostly do that they just come here and create a similar key value pair and put their connection string here but i will be using directly here okay and the connection string format is like this so you have a server is called to localhost user is equal to root database uh, database name and user here is root because most of the uh, default installation have that root username but if you are working in a company then most probably your database administrator will have you know a separate username and password for you so that you can connect so it's better to ask them for the username and password okay but here i will be using root and database is test port number is mostly 3306 but again if you are working in the company then you must uh, confirm with the database administrator that if this port is correct or they have changed it and the password is that's the name and password provided by your dba okay and in my case it's just password 8123 okay so this is our connection then after that we need mysql command okay so i will give this a variable name cmd and it's equal to new mysql command and this sql command will be that uh, sql query which will get you the data so here i will write write select all from person okay and then again you have to specify your connection and then you need uh, mysql data reader okay so i will give it name reader it's called to cmd dot execute reader so what it will do that it will execute this read this uh, above command and give you the result okay and then i will write while reader dot read hit enter and here you have to fetch your data and why i say fetch your data it means that this reader has already get the data from the database it's holding in the reader and you have to extract that data so it's better to write extract extract your data okay so i have uh, this person table which have first name last name age there okay so what i will be doing is that i will create a person model here in our models folder so let me create a class let me call it person add this and here i will add some properties so first one is uh, our id so i will just write prop and double tab so that will be integer and then id same way i will have first name so that will be type of string first name similarly we will have uh, string last name and then we will have teacher as age so this is our uh, person model okay and here at our home controller what i will do is that we will be passing a list of uh, persons so that we can show it on our screen okay so i will write list of person so I will name it persons, it's called to a new list of person. And while extracting our data, I will do person. I will take the suggested name, I'll do new person. And then I will map its properties with that reader data. Okay, so I will write person dot ID. That will be uh reader id but that we have to convert it to integer because it's integer type so i will write convert oh convert so convert dot int 32 
and then we have our reader variable name and here you can see it's have two overloads first one it takes uh, the index and another one is that it takes the name okay so we will go through the name and we we'll know that in the database its name is id okay let me show you that data that database first so here is that database you select all from person and here we can see that i have id first name last name and age so this is the person id and we are converting this id to integer same way we will have person dot first name and this time we don't need to convert it so reader and uh, we will write its column name first name and then we can just write to string method and similarly i will copy paste this and this will have like last name and this reader last name dot to string and then we will have person dot age and again age is our integer type you can see integer so we need to convert that age so i will just copy and paste it and change it to age and then i will add this person to our persons list so persons dot add then person okay and now here we will write reader dot close and then we will pass this uh, list of persons as a model to our view so i will write persons okay so now our backend means our controller code is completed now let us change our ui code so i will go to the index cshtml and here first of all we will add that model which we are passing so we'll write model and that will be the list of person class or person type okay and here let me just add a heading saying persons and then here I will just go ahead and directly add a table, a class table, which is provided by Bootstrap and table dot border. Let's add some style. So it's border table, and then we have table head. Table head. A table head will have a row, and here we will have th and let's add id then we have we'll have first name last name and age so first name last name and age and then we will have table body and in the table body we will loop each list item and print it as a row okay so i will write for each and that collection will be our model and now the, this time this model will be with capital m okay and coming here we can write tr and in this tr we will have td okay and it will have first item will be our item dot id because the first column is id and if i just hit ctrl c ctrl v three time because we have three more columns so here i will go ahead and uh, do like first name then dot last name and then dot h okay and i will just select all, everything to just format this uh, code and i will just write control k s sorry control all control k f to format this code okay save it and uh, now let's run it
and uh, it must be giving me some error because I forget to open that connection now I remember so but let me see if it gives us any error or not ah uh, yeah it's giving me error connection must be valid and open so stop this and uh, first let me write con means connection dot open to open that connection and here we are using uh, this uh, using syntax because uh, what it will do that it will automatically dispose and close the connection once we have consumed it means once it will come out of this uh, block okay so i have added this con dot open and uh, save this and again let's run it and here you can see that it's showing us that person record which is ram singh is 22 sham singh is 24 with id 1 and 2 which is same as this uh, test person test dot person database okay so this is how you can easily connect with mysql database using a dotnet core application thanks for watching and I will meet you another time with any other tutorial. If you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.